Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here. Today we're going to be doing a review on a fun little thing that is apparently exponentially cheaper in Japan than in the US. This is your FMA, Ops Corps, Maritime whatever, ballistic little helmet. Yeah, so FMA version from, I think made in China, shipped from Hong Kong, some nonsense like that. It's a replica. It's not going to stop anything much larger than a 6mm BB. But, hey, that's kind of the point. So, fun thing, it weighs practically nothing. I think it's probably about as heavy as your average bump helmet, maybe. Really light, and uh, yeah, also, well, not ballistic, but it comes with a fun little, ooh, it's kind of soft, the little, um, I always want to say magic tape, because it's the Japanese word, Velcro. Velcro on here, makes a little tonky noise. It has the little pop-out universal mount thing. Pretty cheap, but it looks cool. This is plastic. That's not going to do you much good outside of a uh, GoPro. We have a little bit of elastic here on the back. So yeah, your pretty basic setup. Plastic everywhere. These work, which is cool, but just kind of eh. So, fun stuff. So, simple helmet, lightweight. Bungees here. The bungees probably work. I don't know. I haven't really taken it apart much, but yeah. Inside, You've got your little suspension system, you got your foam little patties, your little other patty, this little, there's a lot of patties here, it's getting pretty Irish really quick, but yeah, this is FMA in there, it's the FMA LXL, this is the larger version because whereas in medium large would fit my head, they have to get the large extra large because I don't know, Asian sizing or something. Back padding, you got another little squishy pad, I don't think it's the same waterproof one because my buddy Tesla had an actual Opticore bump helmet with the actual closed cellophane. This is kind of, it's a bit, probably a bit more comfortable, but I would imagine, as opposed to my buddy uh, Tesla's Opticore, whom I actually went swimming in the ocean with one day, long story, it held up perfectly fine to that. This salt water would absolutely destroy, so. Headlock system is a knockoff headlock, ABS plastic. Not nearly as durable. This is more of like a cotton, mixture that's far less durable than an actual headlock one that you'd get with a real score. This leather, pleather, whatever, here actually, despite being lower quality than the one I've got on my Mitch, is still soft and decent enough to not tear your face up or do anything crazy. Stitching's okay. Um, bolts are okay. What kind of bothers me is the little dovetail mounty thing here is wobble to it. A little frustrating, but again, Japan, this is about a $55, 6,000 yen helmet. I looked on American eBay and people want to $120. If you're just gonna, if you're gonna buy one of these stateside, well, at first, if you have any enlisted buddies or in Okinawa or anywhere in Japan, first have them buy it for you and just bring it back to you or ship it from base or something. First bit of advice. Second bit of advice, if that's not an option, you want to get a ops core sort of helmet just go for the price of two get the 250 whatever together and just go buy like the basic base jump bump version because you'll get better quality double the price and it'll be actually from ops core ops core will make business and they'll all be happy generally avoid i generally honestly i like to avoid replicas why we have this here today there is a reason it's not because i am dirt poor and sad and all those other fun things. Ooh, this is actually kind of soft too. It is because we're testing a theory, as you might have noticed. These are also just the little knockoff FMA swivel things here. I'm gonna get the real ones in a minute. Mostly shipping those out here is a bit more of a pain in the uh, genital region, but yeah, so these are the little knockoff ones. They fit. See, that's the problem. These don't pop right out. This wants to slide instead. Oh, there we go, we got it. So yeah, Gar quality is uh, comparatively garbage. All that could also just be the rails fault for being, well, not a real lap score, but the theory we're testing, the important thing, is we're gonna mount the goggles in back here. We've got legitimate Peltor adapters that we're gonna mount to the Sordans that we're gonna mount up here. And then we're gonna find a way to chop up our middle mask so that the top pieces go through these dovetails that wobble way too much and kind of fill me with rage. 
And then we're going to put some elastic on the bottom part, add a helmet cover. Hopefully the sizing seems close enough that a medium large helmet cover will fit over one of these. Helmet covers are important by the way. They get rid of A, that donkey noise every time you hit it against a branch or something crazy. But they also get rid of any amount of glint and sheen that the helmet would naturally give off when they give away your position. And you can put foliage and other nonsense through them to make you look like a plant. There's nothing scarier than the, uh, was it the brush uprising of 2037, be there or be square. The uh, plants are gonna gain sentience, take up firearms, and overthrow mankind in an attempt to uh, beat the androids to it. Fun fact, you can look it up, it's not online anywhere because it hasn't happened yet. But yeah, a fun thing to be ready for and you can blend into the brush as a double agent. So, helmet cover aside, we got some cool stuff. It's decent. The bands seem to work differently. I initially got a medium large because it seemed like it fit. Fun fact, it didn't, so we sent it back. This one is all sorts of kind of gunked up. I mean, it works, but it's a pain to turn. I'm actually, there's um, some screws back here. If you pull this little padding away, like so, you can see there are a couple screws. The screws can't keep me here. Yeah, I gotta take these screws out. I'm sure there's some mechanism or whatever in there that's causing it to be sticky and not turn freely or whatever we'll fiddle with that something cool will happen but it does the band system does work because it's well based off the real one so we'll put on said helmet definitely get the large extra large unless your name is, unless people like comically call you pinhead you're gonna want the large extra large and you take the back strap here you tighten this up you go ee, ee. again the plus side is it's not gonna come loose without much of a pain in the Lower extremities, this is okay. When we get that on, as you can see, we have minimalized helmet shake. Ah, seizure man. Minimalized helmet shake. We don't even need to put the strap on. I can go. Whoop. And don't take the uh, expression strap on out of context. This is the strap. We're not. So, we can clip this. We so choose, and one of the few times that you can say the word clip without people flying through the internet screen in pure rage. And there, we have a helmet, and we have to put pelter, soldins, goggles, and a mask. Tunk, thunk. In theory, which is why we even have this, because again, 60 bucks to test out a theory is a lot cheaper than, well, yeah. We will get to that though. The next thing I want to get is the actual base jump, and then hopefully, with any luck, we can find a ballistic. They probably have them out in town. Someone probably has one of them. They're like, I don't know what this is. So yeah, as you can see, we've got our ears free. And yeah, we've got the sword I have don't have a little back neck strap and they have like the, what is it, the spring band in it. So they don't, you can't put them underneath the band here by removing the padding. Not gonna work with the spring type. And this is not a very strong band. And uh, yeah, I'd be better just get the new neck type. So we're gonna get the adapter. Cause I hate wearing them under my helmet anyway. So it's comfortable. It dings pretty well, it absorbs impact decently. And the band, yeah, so it works. Ultimately what we're getting to is for what it needs to do, it works. It could be more comfortable, probably. It could be a realistic one, but hey, this is what we got for FMA. And I'm sure it will absolutely fall to pieces if we were to drop it from like the second floor or something. So it comes right back off. So there you go. It's not bad at all if you're looking to go on up. But yeah, if you're in Japan, that's when I'd get one. I would not buy one of these in the States, not for the prices you'd be looking at. But yes, this gives us an opportunity. You'd be wondering, well, good sir night, with all these fun plans you've described to us, why swap helmets? And most importantly, what I'd get to, was what I really want to do, is the addition of YouTube and everything, is A, it's lighter, even on the ballistic side, much lighter for the bump, but even the ballistic side's lighter. And I've got a camera mount right on my Swordens. I used to run it with my old uh, Protec helmet. Keep the camera on there. I used to run the, well, Swordens had, or the uh, Protec had the like basic 20 millimeter rail system. But yeah, moral of the story is, I can run the camera on the Swordens. It is closer to my head. And it doesn't give away my position when I'm peeking around corners. Go into the old Mitch we're moving away from, which, I mean, weight-wise, honestly, it's not too bad. 
it's more than you generally want to deal with. The problem is it's a massive, as it's been described, Darth Vader helmet. You put that on, it's got the old padding system and the chin strap. And it has a ton of wobble, for one. And since you can't run the camera well on the uh, earpiece, you can't modify it to have it sit higher so you can have these swords pop out. But even then, that wobble is going to be banging into it and causing you all types of headaches. So the older type, although the Mitch helmet being much better than the old pag set, pag set or anything, is a, yeah, there's no headband, which has a noticeable impact on the amount of wobble and shake and everything. So this one's not bad, but the camera has to sit out here, which means that by the t when you start coming around a corner, you still don't really know what's over there, but people see your camera. And by the time you do peek, there's already like 60,000 BBs coming at your face, and you get shot each and every time. And uh, yeah, it kind of sucks, particularly yourself wise but on the plus side, this one's ballistic, and this will stop, hopefully. Well, ballistic things, explosives mostly, maybe small handguns. But, decent helmet. Very, very decent helmet. As you see, this one has the actual... This is the x nape, so you can adjust it. Maybe the warm dial works better, I don't know. But it's a decent little head lock thing, actually. I could probably, I'm good sir nice getting an idea here, I could probably actually take this band out. Yeah, I could take this band out of here. It looks like it loops through. I could probably actually make this work with the, uh, little knockoff there with the head lock system. But yeah, this one you can see much higher quality in the stitching, like more nylon or something in there. Actual nay indestructible headlock tab, so. Fun stuff, this is the actual leather band. Leather band gets nasty pretty quickly, but you know, you can wash that, or that's a lot more comfortable. So yeah, FMA helmet. It's got some cool things. It kind of looks ballistic. But yeah, definitely gonna, when I get an actual op score, I'll probably have a lot more ammunition to lambast this with, lambaste this. Whatever the verb I'm looking for is. But yeah, decent helmet. It's fun. It'll be our temporary replacement to make everything sit on a single platform instead of piecing it together. And yeah, so cool stuff. We'll see how it actually holds up in the field. And uh, cheers, stay shield voice. And uh, yeah, it's a helmet. Bye.